From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Morning Edition. Good morning. It is Sunday, October 15th. I'm Kelsey Thorat. It's now been eight days since Hamas militants launched their surprise attack on Israel, prompting Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to declare war. Palestinians in Gaza are taking the brunt of Israel's airstrikes, with the, with the death toll climbing by the hour. The Israeli military is urging civilians to move to southern Gaza before it intensifies the campaign against Hamas in the north. Meanwhile, U.N. shelters across Gaza have run out of water and hospitals could run out of fuel for emergency generators within the next two days. So far, the war has claimed the lives of more than 2,300 Palestinians and 1,300 Israelis. Israeli troops and tanks are positioned on the Gaza border for what is expected to be a large-scale ground offensive. A military spokesman says Israeli special forces are already carrying out raids in Gaza. He also says they killed a prominent Hamas commander. I can inform you that over the night we attacked and killed one of the Nukba commandos uh, leaders that from Khan Yunis, his name is Bilal El Kidra. Uh, he was the leader that conducted the butcher and attack in the Nirim Kibbutz. And this just goes to exemplify that we have the, the intelligence in order to take out Hamas's leadership. Here in the Bay Area, hundreds gathered at the ferry building in San Francisco to protest Israel's bombing of Gaza. President Biden spent more than an hour on Friday speaking with the families of the American citizens still unaccounted for. Some of them are believed to be in captivity. In an interview with 60 Minutes, the president talked about efforts to get them out. I say we're going to do everything in our power to find them, everything in our power. And uh, I'm not going to go into the detail of that, but there's, uh, we're working like hell on it. You can see more of that exclusive interview tonight at 7 here on KPIX. Well, Israel's ground offensive could happen at any hour after the Israeli military warned hundreds of thousands of people to move out of northern Gaza. Many residents are heeding that message even without humanitarian aid ready to help them. Joining us live now from Tel Aviv, Israel, is CBS News correspondent Ian Lee. And Ian, what's it look like out there? Hi, Kelsey. You know, it is kind of tense right now. We've seen warplanes going up and down the coast and helicopters all day. There were sirens earlier, a large explosions likely from Israel's Iron Dome missile defense system. But people on both sides of the border in Israel and Gaza are waiting for this anticipated ground offensive. But for Palestinians, the question with no real answer is where can they find safety? Israel hasn't pulled back on its aerial assault on Gaza. As the country's ground troops amass at the border, preparing for a probable escalation of the war. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu asked soldiers if they were ready. There are still sirens sounding here in Tel Aviv, more than a week after Hamas launched its surprise attack. Shell-shocked residents are awaiting what's next. Palestinians are scrambling to leave Gaza. The United Nations says almost a million residents have been displaced since the war started, with many following Israel's warning to flee. I just have to have the thought of me dying in a bomb in Gaza. <laughs> but the only exit from Gaza, the Rafah border crossing into Egypt, remains closed. There is no place safe in here in Gaza Strip. American Hanin Okal is desperately trying to get out with her three children to join her husband in New Jersey. All U.S. citizens are feeling abandoned and feeling that they are left uh, alone. Some are taking shelter at U.N. schools. Hamas has told residents to remain in their homes. Hamas is a terrorist group. Its only agenda is to destroy the state of Israel and to murder Jews. Oh. President Biden spoke at a gala about the war. A week ago, we saw hate manifest in another way in the worst massacre of Jewish people since the Holocaust. And this morning, Israel's border with Lebanon is also on high alert. And Kelsey, that border continues to heat up. Hezbollah says it fired 
guided missiles into Israel, killing a civilian. Israel's military says its troops were also targeted and responded. Israel has set up a two and a half mile buffer zone along that border with Lebanon, keeping civilians away as the situation gets more tense here in Israel on both fronts. Kelsey. And Ian, you know, a lot of people are concerned about this war spreading to other countries. So what is the U.S. doing to help keep this war contained? Well, the United States is, has one aircraft carrier just parked off the coast. Another one is coming into the area. This is a strong deterrent against other actors, Hezbollah. There's also Shia militias in Syria that could take advantage of the instability. The United States wants to send a message not only to them, but to Iran to not get involved. If Israel does, and when it does, go into the Gaza Strip, they want to keep this war contained and not see it spread throughout the region. Ian Lee in Tel Aviv, thank you so much. We, of course, will continue to follow the latest developments out of the Middle East on air streaming on the CBS News app and on KPIX.com, where you can find live updates. Well, we're starting this Sunday morning with an old familiar friend, the marine layer. Waking up to gray skies, we've even seen it manage to get into at least part of the Tri-Valley. Just about everybody's waking up to it. It's not going to last long. Look how quickly that melted back. By the time we get to like 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, most of us are looking at sunshine. The marine layer is going to hang out along the coast. If you like this kind of thing, enjoy it. We are fast getting to the time of year where the marine layer is not going to be a regular occurrence, but it's still hanging on now. Daytime highs today with more blue sky than anything else. You're going to be in the low to mid 80s for most of the Inland Valley. San Jose, you'll go to 81. Santa Rosa tops out at 79. And yes, something else about mid-October. 70s in the city are to be expected, and that's what you'll do today. A little bit of a warm-up this week. It is 6.55. Time for a look at this morning's top stories. It's now been eight days since Hamas launched their surprise attack on Israel, prompting Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to declare war. Gazan civilians are taking the brunt of Israel's airstrikes, they're also being told to evacuate as Israel's troops and tanks get ready for a likely ground offensive. Many residents are heeding that message and heading south with no humanitarian aid available to help. So far, the war has claimed the lives of more than 2,300 Palestinians and 1,300 Israelis. The U.S. is sending a second carrier strike group to the eastern Mediterranean. U.S. officials say the warships will not fight, but they are meant to deter Iran and other countries in the region from joining the battle. Here in the U.S., demonstrators continue to take to the streets over the conflict, with some saying they have lost relatives in the war. There is steeped, stepped-up security around the country, including at houses of worship. In San Francisco, hundreds of Palestinian supporters gathered at the ferry building to protest Israel's bombing of Gaza. They say they view the violent actions by the militant group Hamas in a wider context as people resisting their occupiers. All right, let's take a look at that seven-day forecast with that warm-up coming our way for Wednesday and Thursday. San Francisco and Oakland, uh, you'll be close to uh, eight, seven or eight degrees above average here. And then you cool right back down again by Friday and Saturday. And next weekend is going to be a lot like this weekend was. Look at the North Bay and South Bay Valleys. North Bay on top. San Jose on the bottom represents Santa Clara Valley. We're going to 91 on, Santa, uh, for, on Thursday for San Jose. But you'll be at 88 on Wednesday. So it really is both days, even if Thursday is technically the warmer day of the two. Wednesday is probably the bigger deal because that's the day you're going to notice the change. Uh, we'll cool back down, though, for everybody by next weekend. And, yes, a small chance of rain in the North Bay Valleys tomorrow afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Have a